and welcome to the Many Hats podcast, where we explore the fascinating journeys of entrepreneurs and leaders who have donned multiple hats in their respective fields. Join your host, Stuart Forsyth, along with special guests as they delve into the stories and insights of individuals who possess a unique blend of talents and expertise, making them true multidisciplinarians. Now, let's dive into today's episode. Welcome back to the Many Hats Podcast. My name is Stuart Forsyth. Uh, and today I'm joined by Gordon Rennie. How are you, mate? I'm good, Stuart. Good to see you, as usual. Thanks so much for coming down and spending some time with me. My pleasure. So the Many Hats Podcast is all about talking with people who are business owners, entrepreneurs, pioneers. Um, you definitely fit into that category with, with a <laughs> Grow Coffee uh, and multiple other things that you've done throughout the years as well. Um, I'd love to hear the story about Grow in particular, though. Do I hear about my superstar DJ skills before and grow? Well, that as well, why? <laughs> you tell me about this all the time, your, your DJing days. I think you miss it more than you say. Uh, I don't miss the late nights. All oh, right. No, uh, too old for it. Do you know, I was, I was gigging another week. I got asked to dip for another band a couple of weeks ago, and I was done in. We finished at midnight, and I too was late. like, this is too late for me. I need my bed at, like, 10 o'clock. <laughs> it's great, though. I love it. Gordon, eh... Uh, Tell me, tell me the story about Grow. How did it all come about, That the idea? Well, I suppose it kind of rolls on from... I used to run quite a successful DJ company from when I was at university at Glasgow Caledonian. I was an accountancy degree dropout. Uh, the city centres were too cool for me in the mornings. And, uh, <laughs> so I started DJing when I was 16, 17, and uh, got really good at it. Started employing people and... Employed all the latest technology and developed it from there. But, you know, we could all see the license trade was kind of dying, dying a death uh, over the last kind of 20 years almost. And uh, it was time to go do something else with your life. And uh, I'd always been a huge lover of coffee bars. And we'd all watch Friends and watch Central Perk and it looked like an easy buck. <laughs> <laughs> we would all get a guitar and a nice couch and it'd be uh, good times. And so, you know, I've done a bit of travelling as well and... So there was a different way to do coffee bars and a wee bit and I uh, thought, you know, this is time we try this. Nice. So we spent a long time looking for a premises, uh, but just, you know, doubt and talking yourself out of things and there was never a right time or a right place and uh, eventually we saw an old pub in Irvine and that was the one. Here we go. Yeah. And it's it's definitely got that Central Park vibe about it. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's all organic food and... No, 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 it's not all organic. Uh, organic food, it's financially feasible. Uh, I was always, even before I grow, I was always quite kind of passionate about just a wee bit of healthier eating and trying to avoid chemicals as much as much as you can. Uh -huh. uh, but still, you know, it's a balancing act. You know, some things are, you know, not as healthy and you try and kind of limit them a wee bit and other things is different. And uh, But yeah, we always took the attitude that if we can financially afford it and we can absorb some of the costs and pass a wee bit on, that we would always attempt to do things just a wee bit better quality product. Nice. That's the ethos of the business. And it's just, the food's incredible. I'm a... <laughs> I've I've personally been in the forty five minute line to get in because yeah. of the such the demand as people want to be there and, and listen I've I've said it many times before, you know it's a busy place. We serve thousands of people every week at both sites. Mm -hmm. uh, I can never guarantee it's going to be perfect for everybody every time, but I can guarantee that we care. Mm -hmm. And again, that was one of the stalwarts of the business. I care deeply. I we take it personal when it doesn't work out for people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have meetings every week, even when we've, we've had really successful weeks and it's been really mobbed and everything went great. We love a meeting on a Monday morning with management. How can we improve? Mm -hmm. How can we improve? How could we have done that better? Uh, if we, every dish and different ideas and we try and improve things. And even last night we were talking about how to improve certain things. Uh, it just never ends. You yeah. always like to try and improve. You're never happy. Ever evolving. Ever evolving. Whether it's cakes or drinks or hot chocolate or anything, whatever it can be that's a staple of the business and the specials that we do, uh, we're always trying to improve and to get even the processes behind the food improved. Uh, there's just so much you can do to make it quicker, better, the quality better. Uh, we never rest on our laurels and yeah. again, that was all, always our attitude from the beginning. As long as the customer walked out that door happy, that was the number one aim that we could ever hope to achieve. The, I mean, but it's not just about food and drink. I mean, it's you've created a culture 
and grow that is just there's such a there's such a people demand. People ask me constantly, you know, you know, you know, why is it busy? And we've had you know numerous businesses in Ayrshire and Glasgow now, like almost try and copy it. And nothing in grow is unique. You know, if you can get eggs everywhere in the world and you can get couches everywhere in the world. But yeah. Grow was successful for a hundred miniature reasons, from even from its range of seating to its car parking to its opening times. There was so many small reasons. It's dog friendly, child friendly. Uh-huh. Uh, it's got good facilities outside as well and inside. There was so many things that, you know, things that I wanted as a consumer. That's where the ideas came from. These are all things that I wanted mm-hmm. in a business. I want to go to a coffee bar that has this. You know, before Grow opened, uh, I was a, a Sainsbury's regular in oven. Right. Uh, upstairs, it had, you know, a nice coffee machine. Had organic coffee beans, <laughs> had baristas. It was, it was decent. It was yeah. a good coffee. Uh, it was open till eight o'clock at night, and that was the only place we could really go mm. uh, to get a kind of good coffee. Enough in right. before it opened. So aye. So that that culture that you've created in the, I mean, it's obviously how many years now? Is, is have you been? been Twenty fifteen. So it will be yeah eight, eight and a half years approaching. So what was the early days? What did that look like in terms of? So you had this concept, this idea. Do you know something, Crow, it's, the wee site in Irvine was almost a victim of its own success from the day it opened. Uh, you know, we didn't have as much staff back then, the kitchen was much smaller, etc. And uh, it was getting hammered from the day it opened. Mm. Yeah, and it's took a while to, to build it up to the levels that it is, is now, and it's notoriety it is now, and it's between Facebook and Instagram, it's looking at 70,000 followers. Uh, wow. And during covid there's so many pubs being shut and people were just looking for stuff to do and it, it get, in terms of social media it got a good boost yeah. uh, from COVID just because people were forced to go to the beach forced to go to parks mm. forced to look for other alternatives and Irvine's a wee gem isn't it in terms of oh. people flock to Irvine for that alone just you know a coastal <laughs> town And anybody that's listened to this uh, isn't aware of and has never been to Irvine uh, if you come down into Irvine the potential of the town itself is absolutely enormous mm-hmm. it's got thousands of acres of beachfront yep. brownfield site with a train station at Glasgow, uh, a major city in the middle of it, two international airports minutes away. Has uh-huh. as a town itself, it's got bags of potential. It's also got, ended up with less problems than a lot of other major towns across the UK. It's out of town shopping, still in town. You can walk from one end to another. Yeah, it's uh, it's even got a retro shopping mall <laughs> if you want to describe it as that. that Which I've got, a, I've got a second cousin who's a. Uh, uh, it works for Historic Scotland, who's trying to get the mall listed. Was that right? He, you know, he's going all of a debate about this. He would actually like to see it restored to its 1970s, as it, yeah. uh, design. And it looked good things the 70s. put back in, uh, the seating and the windmills, the windmills, watermills, etc., right. that were all there. Yep. Uh, he and the, like central, was, the centre yeah. bit, when you walk down? Apparently, and you guys, somebody can check this out for us, apparently it's the longest spans of shops across water in Europe. Is that right? Apparently. Didn't, didn't know that. <laughs> Don't know whether that's true or not. <laughs> but uh, listen, it looks a bit grim at the moment, but who knows? Well, you, you were talking about social media there, um, and, and this is a, a part that I'm keen to kind of hone in on a wee bit in my discussion with you today, because like you're saying, Grow has has definitely found a lot of success through social media. Yep. You, you are somebody who um, have taken social media by the scruff of the neck, really. You were an early adopter yep. in terms of content creation uh, and putting stuff out there tell tell me a wee bit about that in terms of your approach to using and leveraging social media for your business well I get asked a lot of questions we ask, we ask the staff will get asked basic questions but you know what company does your social media who does your do you have a whole <laughs> team and like a lot of small business owners you know you're, if the, the owner is every department the complaints yeah. department <laughs> the social media department everything the finance department <laughs> uh, in terms of the social media I, you know I'm almost self-taught mm-hmm. I follow you know hundreds if not thousands of amazing companies around the entire world you look to see what everyone's doing, whether it's a cafe in Melbourne, Los Angeles, you know, restaurants, people that are just amazing at social media, mm-hmm. put out great product, great meals, great food, and you go, that looks amazing, you know, we can do that as well. And you learn a lot from these people, you learn a lot from photographers, other people that are running social media. Mm-hmm. You know, it's you can look and do your own research into how, you know, people put out different contents, video. You know, there's a lot of great small apps now that you know of as well, you do. Yep your own tutorials for InShot and all different things, and it's really good to learn. 
it's something as a, a small business owner you have to learn. Yeah. Because, you know, as you and I talked about before, you know, a few years ago, whatever your company is now, it's a media company. Yeah. First and foremost. I, I love that. When you said that to me, it's, it's been a phrase that stuck with me yeah. for a long well, time. Someone's, you know, they're talking about the radio, you know, and I agreed with it. Mm -hmm. You, Whether you're a, a lawyer's office, an accountant's, you know, a cafe, you're a social media company and you have to find a way to engage with customers. Yep. Um, we're quite fortunate as well. Just by chance and, you know, the way it's worked out, we have a lot of product from milkshakes, you know, to smoothies, to, you know, beautiful cakes, etc. Mm -hmm. They're all social media friendly products. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a restaurant was very focused on one type of food. It's a whole plethora and we're a whole companies driven by Instagram, Facebook, mm -hmm. a little bit of TikTok now as well, is trying to develop that. And this is where we go with it all. We know we'll quickly get dishes designed, get them photographed, video edited, music, and quickly we'll get specials onto social media and that's what drives our business and turnover. Yeah. And it causes a little bit of anxiety because you can see the turnover go up and down depending on how well you do social media. So you know Is that right? So you yeah. see a direct correlation between, you know, what you've put out in social Massively. and then how that looks in the bottom line. Massively. Right. Um if we were to take a week off, a couple of weeks off, we would see turnover decline. Right. It's so direct to it. It can bring in customers, new customers, it can bring in customers just to get a wee reminder to them. It looks good, I'm going to pop in the car. And we've kind of rules when I try and explain to people as well, you know, when you're doing a social media post, whether it's for a dish or displaying your evening you know, ambience, etc. You know, it should cause an emotion within someone that's seen yeah. it. They should want to get in their car. You know, if you're putting out a post and it's just blah, mm -hmm. does nothing. Well, what's the point? Which is interesting because, yeah, you're evoking emotion and it's kind of like the M&S adverts, isn't it? Where y your call to action doesn't necessarily have to be buy now or yeah. visit now or, you know, you're simply just telling a story yeah. on social media of who you are and these these products that you've got. And and it evokes that emotion I mean, in the sense that I'm like, I need to go down and get a pizza right now or a cake right now. To illustrate that, there's two really basic examples from two of the biggest companies in the world, and it's Apple and Nike. Mm -hmm. You know, Apple's one of the most successful uh, adverts that they ever did, never mentioned the product. It was the two-minute video of the uh, great inventors, and Nike never mentions the technicalities of their product. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just... A woman getting up in the morning, get, putting her hair in a ponytail, putting on some night running shows and going a beautiful run through yep. some beautiful scenery and it's just do it. They didn't mention anything about the trainers. Right. But as you say, mm -hmm. it evokes an emotional response. Yeah. And people love it. And Apple, did you say Apple did one as well? App Apple's most successful advert, I think, was uh, a two minute one. It was the great, they celebrated great inventors. Right. And uh, as you can still see it on YouTube, it's, it's, it's a beautiful advert. Yeah, I love the Apple one where... Um, it was the white the white earphones were just the, the newest thing that they had. It wasn't the AirPods, it was the actual earphones. And that, that one change that they made was making them white. Yep. Because at the time it was just black headphones or earphones that you had. And uh, very similar. It wasn't even necessarily about the product, was it? It was just about that experience of listening to music and whatever sure. else. So so you kind of adopt that approach to, to yeah. how you do your, your content. Yeah, yeah, you're trying to create, you know elicit an emotion in a customer. They shouldn't want to get in a car and come to grow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so you've now got two sites, Irvin, Irvin and Air. So yep. is it a case of trying to kind of rinse and repeat in, in terms of what you've got or do you do you find yourself having a different approach to the two different sites? So the second site is probably, you know, whatever grow goes from now, the second site will have been the most difficult mm -hmm. because, you know, as an owner, you've got to be in two places at once almost, you have more to check up on in a, d a day. You've got to check the ambience is right, music is right, lighting's right, and <laughs> two different places. Mm -hmm. uh, it becomes a lot harder work. Uh, the consistency becomes more difficult as well because you know, you're watching, you know, not seven chefs, you're watching 14 chefs. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah, and it becomes, it becomes a big challenge. Yeah. And there's things we would like to do as we get to the third and fourth one uh, in terms of production kitchen to, you know, concentrate on the quality and consistency again and, you know, getting procedures correct that would make life a lot easier for us. We'd like to get a new bakery within our if that's possible as well. Uh, just different things that we can, can move on from and, you know, develop. But it's certainly been another educational level, opening up the second site. And the second site being, you know, so busy, again, 
uh, it presents a tough challenge. Mm-hmm. You know, and, you know, every company in the past couple of years, since, definitely since coming out of COVID, has experienced staff shortages right. between Brexit, et cetera, and people just changing. The great resignation as it was, and, you know, it's difficult for people to get the teams of people that they would like to get, but we've been really fortunate and uh, we do have a good team of people at the moment within the company and, you know, I can't complain. We've got good chefs and good management and mm. still always looking to add a bit of quality to it if we can find the right people as well and develop it further. Yeah. You know. Teams are a big thing and you are, I mean, you're very hands-on though. You're not, you're, you're not the type of person no, where you just kind of sit back. On. Yeah. Uh, and I noticed that obviously with the content that you create and that, you know, you're very meticulous in, in terms of, so like, so say for example, you're creating a post about a new dish that's going out, you know, how much time do you take on that? So you find it quite funny, but uh, I'll go into the kitchen and actually design it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll have a concept and I'll draw it and everyone will think I'm psychotic because <laughs> I'm drawing these pancakes and drawing, you know, a different food in a plate and they're trying to identify what I'm doing and I'll have seen something in a, you know, restaurant in Tokyo and I'm going, you know, we need this teriyaki beef with an egg sitting here and a drained right. rice and uh, I'm in the kitchen and chefs are trying to interpret what I'm saying and I'm going, yep. no, we're going to do all of this. We're going to get it this. We're going to garnish it like this and it's going yep. to be amazing. And... Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I'll do the whole thing right from start to finish. Yep. Till it, you know, so you've so. designed it, well, you've drawn it, you've designed it, you set it up, and then it's a case of getting something out. Yeah. I will photograph it, video it, edit it, put the music to it, Yeah, uh, and it'll all go, and it's from start to finish. Yeah. Uh, and the same with the cakes, same with everything, yeah, it'll all get designed by me. But you're not sitting with, you know, a big massive DSLR or mirrorless camera and a whole lighting rig and stuff. You know, what you, what again, you, you and I have spoken about it before, but those days, those days are long gone for you. Know, and again, you know yourself, the, the, your, your phone got 50 times better than it did even just a few years ago. That's right. Uh, and every bit of software on it's fantastic as well. It definitely made it a lot easier for the small business owner. Mm. Uh, I mean, in 2024, there's no excuses there. There's, there's no excuses. You just, you've got a resource literally at your fingertips. It can make even the worst person look relatively good yeah uh, the only thing I did notice actually the other night as well is still Facebook is still compressing videos yeah for some reason I don't understand why yeah uh, you know I uploaded something to Facebook and I was checking out a few of the videos I'm going the quality is really looks, it looks garbage it looks garbage yeah I don't understand it yeah I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not a huge fan of Facebook now at all no you know we even divert uh, any messages now gets diverted you're asked to respond on Instagram okay that was a, a difficult thing as a business owner as well you know you're running an entire all the social medias and people are coming and then replying and will speak to you in every social media platform mm-hmm. yeah and you're going this is just too much yeah it's too much it's just an automated message you know it hits up on Instagram it's just not a problem right um, and you know 2015 2017 2018 social media was pretty easy yeah, at that particular point, I mean, we had a a real, a real gem uh, in our in our hands at that particular time because we had, you know, there was the, I mean, there was, but there, it wasn't so much a thing in terms of algorithms uh, and having to create content that fits into those pillars of, you know, education or entertainment or enticement. We we really had, a, yeah, a, a real gem in our hands at that particular point. But well, now, that, that's really interesting that you're saying that because I was actually talking about it the other day, and you know. There's, new businesses, coffee shops, restaurants, all starting now. And I said the exact same thing. This is really, really difficult now. Because, mm-hmm. you know, in 2018, you were building, building, the algorithms were totally different. Mm-hmm. You know, you were getting good traction on, you know, simple posts. Now, you know, you can see yourself, those companies, and us included, you know, you know, we're almost 40,000 followers, and you're doing some posts, and they're getting 60 likes. Yeah. And it's almost... Again, there's people with better knowledge than I, but if a post isn't amazing enough and the algorithm doesn't pick it up as being amazing enough, yeah. whereas, you know, I'm assuming it's looking for things like how many likes is it getting within first 15, 20 minutes, 30 mm-hmm. minutes. Mm-hmm. So if it obviously gets a lot of likes in a quick, a quick period of time, obviously picks it up as a popular, good post. Yeah. So if it doesn't, it just drops it completely. Yeah. So you'll see loads of cafes with huge, massive followings and these posts that are getting 20 Very likes. low engagement. Uh, just nonsense it's yeah. pointless it's um i was reading somewhere that yeah you know organically when your posts are going out it, it's getting seen by less than five percent of your followers initially yeah, I agree with that, yeah. and then 
like you're saying, if it performs well, yeah. then it is going to be seen by more of your followers, and then you're being pushed to people who are not even following your page. But that, I mean, that must be that must feel quite deflating sometimes, especially when you've Absolutely. amassed what seventy thousand followers, like genuine followers as well, not bought. Seventy thousand? No, not none were bought. No. These these uh, are genuine followers. Another interesting thing, you know, for anybody watching this is uh, they'll tell you just to keep posting, keep whatever you're doing, keep posting because the algorithm is you look for people that are at it every day, you mm -hmm. know, getting content up and. <laughs> some of the laughable things that we noticed recently is you could spend an entire day doing a fantastic 25 second real video you know images of great food trending people, audio everything, everything you have done everything yep and it's our gun up as a reel which is more difficult as well a lot more work behind it and it's gets up 70 likes yeah hardly anything mm -hmm. and then and I could give you numerous examples it's on the grow Instagram I've walked past one of the girls breaking a cookie puck and a bit of caramel falling out. Thousand likes. Blows up. Yeah. <laughs> two, three seconds, two seconds. Yeah. Just a snapshot and people loved it. Yeah. And again, that's why I'm going back to, you know, the algorithm must just know if people like that shot. Yeah. For, for my, my understanding of it is those three pillars on social media. So uh, entertainment. So if it's not entertaining. Yep. Educational. Yep. Or enticing. Those are the kind of three pillars that I've come to see that if you're creating content, it needs to be it needs to be something that I'm going to like and I'm going to come back and watch yep. again. Um, it needs to be something that I've learned something and I go, oh, but that's that's brought a lot of value to my life personally or enticing. So in your case, it's like, I need to go right now. I need to yep. get in touch and see when are you open? Can I come down and order this, that and the next thing? Um, and if you're not falling into those kind of three pillars, then most likely you're going to, yep. you're going to find that your, your content isn't, and that's why you see so many companies and, you know, you can see that they're decent enough companies, great restaurants, you know, et cetera, and just going nowhere in terms of social media. And I, I have seen a lot of rises recently in paid for posts. Yeah. And you can see why, because they just see no other alternative to try and build up. But it's not it's not just enough just to pay for a post though either, is it? No. So we were talking about only an hour ago, you know, if you want to pay for a post, you should make Put the effort in. Yes, yeah. because... You're just wasting money, mm -hmm. you know. What are you, um, so kind of looking back to the early days and then where you're at now, what would you say has been your um, biggest challenge of the business? Biggest challenge of the business? Uh, you know something, just not letting your head go down when it's not going well. Yeah? Yeah, just keep going. You know, you get a bad day, everything will go completely wrong. And, you know, you go... Can't take it anymore. Yeah, you know, but it just sun's going to rise in the morning. You get up and you go right. You can go to a Debbie Downer, or you know, and get it let it sink you. But you know, you got to wake up in the morning and go again. Did that? Did that? Did, did it look a bit like that in the early days of growth? Because I remember, I think you were telling me you were. Listen, it looks like any time. Yeah, any time. Yeah, in some respects, the early days would be a bit easier because it was quieter. Right. You know, now there's ninety staff. You know, in social media as a whole. Yeah. Like different ball game and you know you've got financial pressures which is uh, eye watering you know just some of the things you've got £17,000 a month gas and electricity bill wow or that's a lot of cappuccinos wow you need to sell yeah so you can't have a quiet day it's impossible mm. you know and that's just one example that you know a lot of small businesses are facing uh, it puts different levels of pressure on you that you know there's a lot of kind of things that you, you know before you open up a restaurant or a coffee bar you know you just don't realise it's going to mm. come on you you know, you become an expert in everything from dishwasher repairs to <laughs> lighting. You know, you know, people think you're going to open a coffee bar in a restaurant it's going, and it is going to be like friends. Yeah. And I go, no, you're going, to, you're going to need to learn about a thousand different things. You've yeah. got problems. You, you know, the roof will start leaking. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly you're going, you're, you're, wearing, you're wearing many hats. That's you're, the point. You are definitely wearing many hats. <laughs> yeah. You become, uh, you know, you're proficient in a lot of new skills. Yeah. And so, like, the future of, like, where do, where do you see it going in the future? Because you've, You've brought it to this point, but in 2024... Well, uh, yeah, our plans was to get a third and fourth site open, and it still is. It's just waiting to see if the right opportunity comes along. We did, you know, put in offers now for uh, three prominent premises within Ayrshire. Uh, one in Glasgow, sorry, uh, which was the old Tower Records building, which we didn't get. So right. just waiting to see, yeah. uh, you know, if something beautiful and amazing pops up. Uh, we'll think, oh, OK, I right. can see it grow in there. That'll be, <laughs> that'll be good fun. 
What do you What do you do outside the business? Like, how do you keep going? How do you? What's your downtime look like? Uh, there is no downtime, and uh, <laughs> uh, uh, the gym. So, if you're starting a business, there's no downtime. Yo, there is. It's twenty four seven. In fact, somebody says, you know, how, you know, how did you build up growing? I'm going well. I had no other commitments in life. So you were able to go twenty four seven at it, and mm. you know I'm able to there day and night, and you know making sure things are the way they're meant mm. to be. Uh, but you know, you know every night, at least four, four nights a week, I, I go to the gym for an hour. Yeah, yeah. So I do it for you. Is that just help you switch off a wee bit? You know, yeah. even in the gym, you're in the phone. Is that right? <laughs> in the gym, you're in the phone. Wow. Yeah, you're never off it. But then, so keeping yourself in physical peak, mental peak as well. That's yeah. that's your thing. I mean, for me, I'd love to say I go to the gym, but clearly I don't just now. It's, and I gave up the football, so I'm, uh, I, I need to find something again. That's but that's important, though, isn't it? And but especially when you're a business leader, you need to find some sort of outlet that's a, away from work as well, isn't it? Yeah. Because I mean, ninety staff, yeah, that that must be a huge pressure. It is a huge pressure, you know, and everybody employs differently, and I uh, have a really good relationship with you know almost all my staff, uh-huh. even the ones that have left. I've got a good relationship, and we have a, as a company, we've got a really high return rate. A lot of people go away to university, travelling, you know, different other jobs. And, you know, you're leaving good terms, you're always welcome back at Grow. Yeah. We do have a really high return rate. Uh, some of them become like family uh, to you as well. And, you know, you're going to work with people you, you want to work with and you like working with. And mm-hmm. it does make your day a lot better as an employer. If you actually like the people you, you're going into the office with, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it makes life a lot better. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, so just as we kind of finish up this last bit... Um, you know, for people who are listening are hopefully getting a wee bit of a a, a few wee nuggets of wisdom out of you um, in terms of running business. But what would you say, you know, for people who are maybe starting out in this journey, not necessarily in, you know, food and drink industry, but, you know, any sort of industry, you know, what what would be your advice in terms of starting out and, and, and pursuing something that they were passionate about? So, I mean, even before I started to grow, I went and interviewed two or three successful cafe owners in Glasgow uh, that I would deem as successful anyway and you know one guy had just opened for a year and you know asked advice and help etc and a lot of the warnings they gave me actually it came true and stuff like that as well so it's actually just talking to people even people that have failed you can learn so much from people that it didn't work out for them mm-hmm. you know they can tell you the mistakes they made and where they went wrong and how they think they would have done it differently you can learn so much from businesses that didn't go well and from people that did, obviously. But one of the things I would say, and people that gave me advice, you know, that kept seeing us through the good times, got us going, got us to the next site, you know, things like the money in the bank isn't yours, mm. don't spend it. Mm. You know, if my business is going well, that's not a time to go buy a new car, a new house, don't. Right. You know, keep that money there because something will break down. You could have a bad six months, you know. Live below your means. Live below your means. Don't spend the money and just, you know, keep it away for a rainy day, your next site, your development, whole different things that that money's for and for the VAT and HMRC, you know, different things that are going to want paid. Pay your suppliers. Mm. We never let, you know, debts pile up. Uh, Most of our suppliers are actually paid immediately upon order. Different things like that will, you know, keep me in good stead. Mm. You know, you can accrue a lot of debts, you know, a quick period of time and suddenly your business is under pressure yeah. if you can as well try and buy a premises you know rather than rent rather than rent yeah. right you're just you're lining the pocket of a landlord uh-huh. you know at least if you're working away and you're paying down a bank loan you know you own the premises at the end of it there's something for you to sell uh-huh. if you're just leasing then there's nothing for you to sell effectively it's uh, a lot less money you're going to make at the end of the day uh-huh. but certainly you know saving as much money as you possibly can, uh, living below your means, reinvesting that money back into your business for the future, mm. for development, it will pay you dividends in the long run. Yeah. Yeah, but just if things are going well for you, just still keep the head a wee bit. Yeah, I like that because, I mean, that was my own experience when I first started out mm-hmm. with, with Limelight. I was thinking, oh, yes, man. Yeah. I'm earning a fortune here and mm-hmm. and uh, very quickly you realise there's peaks and troughs. There's peaks and troughs and a lot of people just don't budget for the troughs mm-hmm. and that's what sinks, you know, probably most companies. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and, you know, even when we were t- r- running the DJ company, you know, I worked for a lot of people that were made for the rest of their life and it just didn't work out for them in the long term that way. 
Right. You know, a lot of people go on spending sprees, buying new cars, you know, lavish lifestyle, mm. and, uh, you know, it'll lend you very quickly. There's a great book uh, that I would recommend to anybody, and it's The Psychology of Money. I think it's Morgan Housel's the author. And it's just a wee short read that's very pleasant, and uh, you can get it in the audio books as well. And uh, I would advise any business owner to go listen to that because mm-hmm. uh, it'll tell you, you know, how you can become successful and avoid the pitfalls. Yeah, great good. advice, Gordon. Thanks so much for no, no for coming, sure. and uh, I've loved I've loved listening to the story. I grow. Uh, where and when are you open for people who are listening that have never been? Uh, we are open in Irvine Harbour. Mm-hmm. And we're also open just off the major Whitlers roundabout in here, uh, which is the old from Frankie and Benny's. You all know that roundabout. It's got about a thousand lights on it, and there's about 10 car accidents a day, so be careful <laughs> going round it. <laughs> um, uh, and so, yeah, again, from nine o'clock to 10 o'clock at night, because uh, I loved a coffee bar that was open late into the night with a big couch and a big armchair. Yep. And yeah, you can sit and relax. We're dog friendly as well, child friendly. Get garden facilities for the kids, etc. It kind of it ticks a lot of boxes, but it is home from home. Yeah, I can I can personally vouch for it. Brilliant You're in place. enough eating. Yes, I, I love breakfasts. <laughs> breakfasts are my time of day for for it because it's uh, just the start of the day. Uh, a good big well, I get a wee breakfast, a wee a wee grow. Yeah, it's enough for me, but it's brilliant. Can personally vouch for it. Go and, go and check it out definitely. Gordon, thanks again. No, no problem. And. Uh, if you're listening, guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, you'll be updated of any future podcasts coming out. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Mini Hats Podcast. Remember to hit subscribe to be notified of all new episodes. For any questions or topic ideas, you can reach Stuart on Instagram at many underscore hats underscore podcast. We'll see you next time.